This wasn't my plan, guys. In today's video, we are scaling up another nostalgic treat. Can we make giant lucky charms and will they taste just as good? Guys, recently we had a visit in the studio with our friends Hannah and Heather, and they had this amazing idea to try and scale up Lucky Charms, and that sounds amazing to me. Now, in the past you have seen us scale up a lot of food, and you've seen what we can do with our freeze dryer. Well, we want to combine the two and see if we can make giant cereal. I think it's going to be pretty fun. Here's the basic idea. We have some Lucky Charms, and we want to see if we can scale up this cereal. We have lots of jumbo marshmallows and an interesting way to make the cereal itself. Let's see if it works. Now, Lucky Charms, as everyone knows, is one of the greatest cereals ever invented. Yes. Um, it's got, well, it's really got marshmallows, and that's what's great about it. And then it also has what my sister calls the wooden parts. <laughs> the wooden parts? It's a delightful cereal. Everyone <laughs> knows Lucky Charms. Everyone likes Lucky Charms that I know of. It's Unless it's only sold in the American, in which case we're really sorry. I don't mm. think it is. I have heard of people in England buying Lucky Charms yeah. at like American food stores. Yeah. So I guess that is possible. We want to scale this up. We've scaled up a lot of different types of candy before, but we want to see if we can make the cereal giant. So, a couple of fun ways to do this for the marshmallows. I think we actually got very lucky with that one. So this company, we did a video not too long ago with this brand of marshmallows and they liked it and they sent us a crate of marshmallows and it was amazing. Well. We want to try something else with these now too. Giant marshmallows. We're not going to be able to make exactly the same patterns as Lucky Charms, but we think if we cut these up, we can turn these into jumbo marshmallows that are freeze dried, just like Lucky Charms are. And that's something that's kind of interesting. They call least, it marshmallow. At least we assume that they're freeze dried. We think that's what it is because, because it's exactly the same texture we get when we freeze dry them. In fact, this is a freeze dried marshmallow. It was a regular rainbow colored marshmallow, and then we freeze dried it. And I gotta say, the texture is just exactly the same. It really is. Flavor's pretty close to the same, too. Crunch is the same. It's got that strange, like, raspy texture the same. Listen to this. <laughs> it really is like you bite it and you're like, oh, like a Lucky Charms marshmallow. Mm -hmm. I think that's our plan mm -hmm. for the marshmallows. We're gonna take these. I think we'll cut these into probably quarters, thirds. Thirds or quarters, something like that. So we're still gonna have oversized marshmallow bits. And we're gonna freeze dry these. And uh, we were trying to figure out the cereal. We have freeze dried so many odd things in the last few days. We, we tried, tried several different Donuts, yeah. sugar cookies, uh, bread dough, cooked bread. The one that we actually landed on was one when we did the freeze drying desserts video. It wasn't too long ago yep. and we just wanted to see what the texture would be like if we freeze dried a piece of cake. And what ended up happening is we got a texture that's actually fairly similar to cereal. It was a yep. little more open texture because cake has air bubbles and stuff in it. But it was also interesting because even though it was a chocolate cake, the flavor seemed to be a little bit more mild. Mm -hmm. And so we thought if we had just a white cake, a vanilla something cake, and we freeze dried that, we might get something pretty similar. It's not gonna have the same like oat flavor to yeah. it. Well, I was just thinking, we were talking about maybe putting like a uh, vanilla glaze on these, like for when we're making the larger version, but these are almost salty. I think it's to kind of, balance out the super sweetness of the marshmallows. Something in here has salt in them. Mm -hmm. So maybe the glaze can have, it can be a sugar glaze maybe. with a tiny pinch of salt in it to balance it out and either way we'll apply it very, if we need very it. I'm lightly. Not, I'm not even sure if we're gonna need it, we'll see. It's true. I actually think I remember growing up that the cereal was more sugar glazed. I took a food sciences class in school and we had someone from General Mills who actually came to the class cool. and they talked about how cereals had in fact changed. So if you are over the age of 25, <laughs> maybe 30, and you feel like you remember cereals being a little bit tastier when you were a kid, maybe that's just because you were a kid and there's nostalgia, but there is also the fact that a lot of cereals kind of industry-wide did in fact change up their recipe so that they wouldn't have sugar as the first ingredient anymore. It's now the second ingredient. So we got whole grain, oats, sugar. And I don't know that Lucky Charms was one that used to have sugar as the first ingredient, but I think they did sort of all collectively back off the amount of sugar that's in their cereals. And that affected a lot of them. Uh, for instance, I think that's why Trix stopped being fruits, like shaped like the fruits for a while, is because with lower sugar, they didn't bind together as well and spheres were easier. Pretty sure I've seen in stores they've now figured out a way to go back to the fruit shapes, but I haven't tried them. 
So we have our marshmallows, we're gonna cut those to smaller, but then we need to make our cereal. And as we're saying, we think cake might be a good solution for that. This is a cake. We went to Costco and said, we'd like a cake, but with no frosting on it. We got some strange looks. The guy said it's not the first time it's happened, but it might be like the second time it's happened. So cake, we even had them cut it down the middle as though they were going to put frosting in it. That's just for size convenience. So I think now we need to go ahead and cut out a bunch of the cereal shapes. Um, yep. We were looking at, you know, about a third of the marshmallow. So we're going for a two, three inch size. I think we can get a whole lot of pieces out. And then we do get it cut it in half so we can get even more with the second layer. Just trying to figure out the cereal. So there's multiple shapes of the yeah. cereal. There's clearly this sort of bell shape. And then there's this like goldfish slash balloon. I think okay. it's supposed okay. to be balloon. And then we've got, it's hard to tell. So some of them definitely seem to be X's and some of them are very clearly clovers, pretty much just an X. But then you have some that look like this and you're like, oh, are the X's just clovers that didn't go well? I'm not sure if those are supposed to be the same or different. I think we can probably just do three shapes. That's a good number. So let's go for the bell, the fish, and the clover, or? I like it. I'm gonna start chopping up marshmallows. Okay. That's fantastic. I love these. Also, when we first got the care package from this company, we were so excited. I was squealing and bouncing around the studio. And then we tried roasting them, and guys, giant rainbow toasted marshmallow is probably one of the best things that's happened in my life. Also, serving size is one piece, so that and it's 210 calories and 50 carbs. Okay, we've got marshmallows, we've Again. got cereal to be. Let's go freeze dry it. We're gonna freeze dry it. We're gonna make it crunchy. Well, it's been 24 hours. Our glorious cereal pieces are all freeze dried and they've definitely taken on a more cereal-like texture. Um, the cake is not, I would say, as sturdy as the normal cereal, but that's probably for the best because if it were, I don't think we'd be able to chew it very well be a lot to get through. How's the marshmallows? I'm so happy right As now. expected? Mm hmm All right. For the visual of the cereal, I actually do want to toast them a little bit. I know we cut off all of the top layer of the cake to take that away. That was more of a texture issue. Um, we do want to try and get a little bit darker, not much, just a bit. So we've got the oven on broil, and we're just gonna take all of the cereal bits and put them in the oven and try to brown them up just a little bit. We can't use a regular bowl for these. It would be a piece of cereal floating in a bowl, so. Maybe a marshmallow also. So we're gonna need a bigger spoon and a bigger bowl. Let's take part of this. I like that plan. Uh, how high are you thinking? I think you were right, this, right, this line. Right at this seam line, I think it's a good guide. It'll be nice and even, and yep. I think that's a good size. Yeah, I think that'll be great. I don't trust our cereal to be durable enough to just pour in without breaking because yeah. it's made of dehydrated roasted cake. <laughs> we need some lucky charms in there. Oh, I do. I'm just moving all the cereal in. All right. I think our cereal needs some milk. Just a little bit. A lot. A lot of it. I hope these float. <laughs> it's working! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's working! Beautiful. Uh, I think that looks great like that. I think that's pretty fantastic. How's that going for you? Okay. Can you make giant Lucky Charm cereal, Nate? Oh yeah. I'm not sure you should. It's very hard to eat. You just said you'd forgotten breakfast, so um, you're set now. This is my breakfast now. Cake soaked in milk with giant, giant marshmallows. Nice. Ah, 
Okay. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top for our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.